Welcome to Top 10 Beyond the Screen, I'm your host Johnny Rogers and in today's video we'll be breaking down some of the biggest movie ripoffs of all time. I actually can't believe that these production companies really got away with making these films. But before we get into that, if you don't want to miss another daily video from us, make sure you tap that subscribe button to join our notification squad. Now with any further delay, let's get right into today's list, the Top 10 Movie Ripoffs. In at number 10, what's up? The Brazilian animation studio called Toyland Video is widely known for creating these super low budget direct to DVD films that are nearly identical to the work of, say, Pixar and DreamWorks. This movie ripoff is called What's Up Balloon to the Rescue. In this movie ripoff, two scientists, a boy and his older sister, along with her boyfriend, go out in an experimental house held up by a massive balloon. You know, instead of a bunch of smaller balloons like in Up. Although in this film, the group is in search of a portal with monsters in it. And after they accidentally release these monsters, it's up to them to find a way to stop them. It has terribly lazy CGI animation with even more stiff movements from the characters. The plot is also severely flawed and at no point can it decide who the main protagonist even is. It also is infamous for its racist and stereotypical jokes. Perhaps its only redeeming quality is that there are plenty of unintentionally funny moments. In at number 9, Alan Quatermain in the Temple of Skulls. This one is a bit bizarre because at a glance you would for sure think that Indiana Jones was the original, but in reality both of these films are a bit of a ripoff. But there's no doubt that Indiana Jones became the more famous one. Both were adaptations of British author H. Ryder Haggard's 1885 novel called King Solomon's Mines. Apparently the adventure known as Alan Quatermain was also the template that both George Lucas and Steven Spielberg used when creating their character of Indiana Jones. Without a doubt though, the crew that made Alan Quatermain is still using the popularity of Indiana Jones to make their profits. Perhaps the most egregious part of this mockbuster ripoff of Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is that the Temple of Skulls film borrows a lot from Indiana Jones. The only main difference being that old Alan went straight to DVD. In at number 8, Almighty Thor. Coincidentally, this film just so happens to be released right alongside the release of the Marvel Studios film Thor. Although due to the almighty budget of Marvel Studios, this sci-fi network version of Thor pales in comparison. One had Chris Hemsworth as Thor and the other had a guy that looks like he cleans pools on the weekends for extra cash. The Marvel version of Thor is this brash cosmic hero that uses his hammer to bring destruction in battle. This other Thor whines a lot and actually uses an Uzi to win his battles. Yes, an, an actual Uzi, which hilariously is pulled into Loki's hands and then used to knock down Thor with utter ease. Oh, and Thor's hammer in this version is called the Hammer of Invincibility. God, the creativity is astonishing. I truly want to know what these people were thinking before airing this 90 minute trash heap. In at number 7, Snakes on a Train. Okay, the filmmakers didn't even try to disguise this one. Released by a studio called The Asylum, it was the first major rip-off blockbuster that put them on the map for recreating low-grade copycat movies. When the producers started to run out of money on this project, they garnered the attention from Japanese investors who were only interested in it because of their poster. The investors actually thought that at some point, a giant snake was going to eat the entire train, even though the movie never featured anything like that. But in order to secure the fund, they had to add it in. The entire film runs the exact same plot as Samuel L. Jackson's Snakes on a Plane, which just means that there are lots of snakes crawling around in a very claustrophobic area. Although the film just doesn't hit the same as Snakes on a Plane, mainly because it's easier to stop a train and just let the snakes off than land an entire airplane packed full of them. Both movies are quite ridiculous in nature, but Snakes on a Train feels like a very unnecessary addition to the genre. In at number 6, Atlantic Rim. In another aside, Asylum Studios classic, it seems like their business model for this one was just to confuse the people looking for Pacific Rim. Although you don't have to be fluent in geography to recognize that they are indeed two very different films, both in CGI power and overall popularity. I've never seen anything like this before. We don't believe the rig disappeared. We believe it was scuttled. I wrote that clip in particular because it is just so hilarious to me that they open their trailer with a line of dialogue that says, I've never seen anything like this before. Oh, the irony. It is without a doubt a blatant ripoff of Pacific Rim, although I must give credit where credit is due. Atlantic Rim was actually released just days before Pacific Rim hit theaters, but Atlantic Rim went straight to DVD. This low budget film took place in New York City instead of Hong Kong and follows the exact same premise as Pacific Rim. The only difference was that they made their movie for $500,000 and Pacific Rim had a budget of $190 million. 
big difference. In at number five, Apocalypse Z. Taking a break from those lazy Asylum Studio films for a second, and we have this Italian zombie remake that changed its name just to capitalize off of World War Z. It was originally called Zombie Massacre, but was soon retitled to Apocalypse Z when it was released on DVD in the UK. Not only did it change its name to take advantage of the anticipation for this new Brad Pitt movie, but the film itself bears a very close resemblance to a movie called Maplewoods, aka Operation Nazi Zombies. The inspiration, if you will, is very apparent, and overall the final production was awful. It would be an insult to B-level movies to even call it that. Horrornews.net gave the film a rating of C-, stating that while the film was overall awful, the directing and makeup effects were a highlight. Well, I sure hope so. If you're going to shoot a zombie movie without great makeup effects, then you're just asking for your film to flop. Again, this feels like a movie you buy at a gas station because you just can't tell the difference based on the cover. In at number four, The Little Panda Fighter. This one is absolutely hilarious to me. The, the, the Little Panda Fighter? It, is this real life right now? Wrapping up its plot in under an hour, The Little Panda Fighter is a clear ripoff of Kung Fu Panda. Previously titled Heavy's Little Bear, Oh god, this just keeps getting better and better. This Brazilian directed DVD film drew great criticism for being a mockbuster of the DreamWorks film. However, in The Little Panda Fighter, the panda works at a boxing club and has dreams of becoming a professional dancer. Oh, and he's also in love with a waitress named Beth. The film was released just months after Kung Fu Panda was, and it was heavily trashed online. People said that the animation was terrible, and that the dialogue physically hurts, and that the story was contrived and barely feels complete enough to fill that 50 minute runtime. In at number 3, Metal Man. In Metal Man, later renamed to Iron Hero, Kyle Finn has the ultimate combat machine, a metal suit with superhuman powers. He uses it to defend the good and fight evil. But the only thing that this film has to fight is copyright lawsuits. The box alone for Iron Hero is hilarious. I mean, the heart of Superman, the mind and body of the Terminator, part man, part machine, all hero. Its title alone is ripping off Iron Man, the tagline is stolen from Robocop, and the costume looks like they painted an old Green Goblin suit and added an Ant-Man helmet. Perhaps the best failure of this film is looking at the IMDB page. It took three people to basically copy the plot of Iron Man, but still somehow find a way for nothing to make sense. There isn't even any action that makes this film worth seeing. In at number two, Transmorphers Fall of Man. Coming back in with another Asylum Studios gem is the prequel to their 2007 release of Transmorphers. With this film in particular, they blatantly copied the Michael Bay blockbuster called Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Although its plot borrows heavily from the first Transformers film, as well as Terminator 3 and Maximum Overdrive. In this present day prequel, the robot invaders attack the Earth, forcing a small band of humans to seek refuge below the surface of the planet. Although it was met with a critical reaction, most people actually favored it over the first Transformers first. Transmorphers, make sure you get that. The only real issue that many people had with the film was that it had these very long and boring moments that only had a few hits of action. It gives spectators a sense of urgency, but then nothing really comes to fruition. Last but certainly not least at our number one spot, Paranormal Entity. This whole list is also a pretty good advertising tool for Asylum Studios, but in 2009 they decided to take a crack at creating a scary mockbuster film. It was without a doubt only made to capitalize on the success of paranormal activity, and believe it or not, but Dick Van Dyke's grandson Shane Van Dyke actually conceived, wrote, and helped make this copycat film for Asylum. The best part was that it wasn't even an issue of budget between these two films that made Paranormal Activity stand out on its own. They were made for nearly the exact same amount of money, but Paranormal Activity was just executed in a much better way, resulting in one going on to become a cult classic and the other ending up in DVD sale bins everywhere. With that, let's check out some of your comments from the video titled Top 10 Funniest Movies of All Time. Leslie Johnson says, listen, this was a great list, but how are you going to put Step Brothers on here but not Talladega Nights? In my opinion, Step Brothers is just more widely quoted, meaning that the jokes were more memorable than, say, Talladega Nights. Not to take anything away from that comedic masterpiece, but that's just how I decided to judge it. Zoe Tremaine Woodcock says, Superbad is still funny to this day, to be honest. I love it so much. Yeah, it's still one of my favorites, and I watch it anytime I can. It never gets old. That and 40 year old virgin, that would have been another good one. Julie Black says, Elf is an amazing movie, it is a Christmas tradition for us to watch Elf. Also Will Ferrell three times on this list, awesome. I knew somebody would appreciate it, and Elf should be a tradition for anyone to watch around December. Around December, in case you're not celebrating Christmas. Michael Ross says, give us a part two, Johnny Rogers. So demanding. I shall talk to the higher ups and we'll see what we can do. Jenna Bresky says, totally thought you said anal house and not animal house. 
<laughs> oh god, I hope we don't have to blur and bleep that out. That's hilarious. It also fits into this list of movie ripoffs very, very well, so thank you for that. And that has been the Top 10 Movie Ripoffs. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you to our editors for all of your hard work. If you enjoyed this video, then please show us some love here by tapping that like and subscribe button. Plus, don't forget to leave us a comment down below with your thoughts on today's list. And for more videos like this one, all you gotta do is tap that playlist when it pops up. From Top 10 Beyond the Screen, my name is Johnny Rogers, saying until next time, stay classy.